Lord, help us to look out and listen for your Holy Spirit. May we welcome you with open hearts and minds. Call us, inspire us, and surprise us, and challenge us. Give us confidence and calm assurance. Lead us to your power and love. Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters. I do welcome you today so that we are able to hear the word of God, so that you are able to understand what God is saying to you this morning. I believe that through this word, through the power of the Holy Spirit, something is going to happen in your life. When you hear the word of God, you never, your life will never be the same again because it is God's word. And that is the truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you. We pray to you. Send your spirit to work in our lives so that your kingdom may come. Speak in our hearts and give us grace to listen so that we may live out the gospel as a witness in the world. Glorious God, we praise you for all your gifts to us. Help us use them in your service. We give thanks for all those whose gifts are used to build up the church. For all those whose gifts build community. For all those whose gifts turn us outwards to extend your welcome to those who have not yet met you. Come Holy Spirit. In your name I pray. Amen. I will call Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from John uh, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. Praise the Lord. And um, I get excited when Johnson says that today's message is going to do something amazing and the Holy Spirit's going to do amazing things in my life. I just, yeah, can't wait to hear the message today. But I'll be reading now from John 16, 12 to 16. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you in a little while you will see me no more and then after a little while you'll see me and this is the word of the lord praise god for that verse it's a it's an exciting one and a, a great promise so we'll uh, get johnson back and hear what uh, god's put on his heart this week thanks johnson thank you brother ben for the reading of the word of god <clears throat> Uh, le let me just give you this illustration of a man called John Boer, who was a blind person. He describes having a seeing eye dog beside him as like having a pair of wings. His dog is both a companion and a guide. So John tells us that not only does the dog enable him to live a fulfilling life, walking wherever he would like in public places and experiencing events and people, but having the dog has also increased his relationship with others because people will stop and talk to him, socialize and get to know him. They are drawn to his dog. The relationship has increased in his social life and ultimately his psychological health. But I also want to tell you this morning that God has given us, his children, also our personal guide. Jesus said in verse 18 of Chapter 16, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. The word guide, interestingly, in the Greek language is the word that is used to describe someone who guides a person. Who is blind, it literally means lead the way. Like John, whose dog was leading him. When God saves us, he does not leave us to grow up in the dark. He enables us to walk in the light. In Romans 8 verse 14 it says, For as men as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. The Holy Spirit lives within us and moves behind us and goes before us. That is what he says. 
So the Holy Spirit has two ministries. He has a ministry to the sinner and a ministry to the saint. In verses 7 to 11 of this very chapter, see that the Holy Spirit has a convincing ministry, a convicting ministry, and a converting ministry to the sinner. So, but in verse 12 to 15, we see he has a communicating ministry to the saint. So he has come to guide us, and more specifically to guide us into all truth. Not just to guide us, to guide us into all truth. Truth is the major concern of the Holy Spirit. In fact, both here in verse 18 and in John 14 verse 17, he is called the spirit of truth. So when he, we learn that about this aspect of the work of the Holy Spirit, we will understand that he is the only guide we need. So my theme today is the only guide we need. The only guide we need is the Holy Spirit. The only guide we need. So the Holy Spirit guides us to receive the truth. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now in verse 12. Don't miss the blessing of that verse. I've told you before that with God's timing is more important than time. So when God leads, he is not only in the right way, and he not only leads to the right place, he always leads at the right time. And that is what it is. So, there was a lot of truth that those apostles needed to learn, needed to record, and needed to pass on to us. But at that particular moment, they were not ready for it. Now, when Jesus spoke of the Spirit guiding into all the truth, there is an important word in the Greek language that is missed in English. In the Greek language, it literally says the truth. What he was referring there was the truth of the word of God. Not just the truth. He was referring to the truth of the word of God. So the Holy Spirit has come to guide us into the truth about God. The truth about sin. The truth about salvation. The truth about life. The truth about death. The truth about heaven. The truth about hell. In other words, he has come to guide us into the truth that real matters. Now that truth is found in the truth of the Bible. But we cannot understand the Bible. Nor can we understand the truth in, in, in the Bible apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. You can read the Bible just like a novel. You will never understand it apart from the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. That is, we have received the Spirit of God that he might enable us to receive the truth of God that is found in the Word of God that comes from the heart of God. That is where he got the truth. Right from the Word of God. But Paul goes on to say in verse 14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Anybody can read the Bible without the help of the Holy Spirit. But nobody can understand the Bible apart from the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand it. You can read it as a historical book, but you will never understand it unless the Holy Spirit helps you. So the Holy Spirit is God's transformer. It takes the incredible truth of God in the right place, at the right time, in the right way, gives it in such in a way that we can handle it. And we can use it to give us the power that we need to be or that we need to be for God. So because he acts as the transformer of divine truth, we can receive it. We can receive it. The Holy Spirit guides us to, re to remember the truth. You know, we need to remember the Bible whenever we read it. Has it ever occurred to you that Jesus never wrote anything down? Several apostles and most of the prophets considered their message so important, they wrote it on paper so others could know it. In fact, they were even told by God to do it through inspiration. But even though Jesus believed his authority was supreme, and even though everything he was 
He said it was straight out of the mouth of God. He never picked a pen. <clears throat> and the reason, because he anticipated the reminding ministry of the Holy Spirit. He knew the reminding work of the Holy Spirit would help the disciples to write everything that he did. So in John 14, verse 26, he said, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Bring to your remembrance all things that I have told you. So you see, how do we know that the disciples remembered correctly what Jesus said? And told us everything that he did say and he wanted us to hear. Only through the Holy Spirit. It was only through the Holy Spirit. Well, it is because the Holy Spirit guided them to remember the truth. Have you ever forgotten anything? You know the truth is, most people cannot even remember what I preached maybe last Sunday or maybe what I preached maybe two weeks ago. The truth is, a fault memory can be a fatal flaw. There is a story about a young preacher fresh out of seminary who was preaching his very first sermon and it was a trial sermon for a church that was thinking about calling him to be their pastor. Well, he wanted to start out with something that would be humorous and grab their attention. He remembered out time hearing an older preacher get up and say, the happiest days of my life were spent in the arms of another man's wife. Then he paused for dramatic effect and added the words, my mother. Well, this young man, young preacher, thought that would be just a trick to start out his message. The only problem was he forgot to tell his wife, who was a hot tempered red-headed, what he was going to say. So he got up nervous enough as it was and said, The happiest days of my life were spent in the arms of another man's wife. Well, at that moment, he was in his dramatic pause. His wife got out of the pew and began to make her way to the platform. And at that point, he had a mental block, thought for a moment and said, and to save my wife, I can't remember who it was. <laughs> so you see, it's only the Holy Spirit. Well, the reason why we have a New Testament is because the disciples and the apostles were not allowed to forget what Jesus taught. But they were reminded of the truth that he gave as well as the truth that was to come. Think about this. In John 14, verse 26, he promised the Spirit would teach the disciples. So the Holy Spirit is a teacher who teaches the disciples all things and to bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. That's the gospel. So the Holy Spirit is purpose is to teach. So in John 16 verse 18 he said the Spirit will guide you into the truth. Into all truth. And whatever he hears he will speak. So that is the epistle. But the last part of John on verse 15 says he will tell you things to come. Prophecy. He will tell you things to come. That is the book of Revelation. We have read in the book of Revelation. So the Holy Spirit came to guide us into historical truth from the Gospels, doctrinal truth from the Epistles, and prophetical truth from the book of Revelation. We find it. But these words were not only given to the disciples. They were also given to us. Because the Holy Spirit not only reminded them what to write, he reminds what they wrote. Have you ever been in a situation where at the right time God gave you a verse of scripture? You are doing something and you are in a situation and just God gave you the scripture, the verse that comes into your mind. Maybe when a difficult time in your life or going through a tough situation and a verse of scripture sprang to your mind, what is this verse for? To help you. To encourage you. That was the reminding ministry of the Holy Spirit. Incidentally, that's why it is important to be in the Word of God and get the Word of God into your heart. So we read the Word of God, not just to read, we read the Word of God so that we can keep it in our heart. Like what in the Psalm says I've hidden thy word in my heart so that I'll not sin against you. In Psalms 1 1 and 19. Because God can remind you of what you have never read. He only remind you of what you have read, read. 
read. But the Holy Spirit guides us to remember the truth. So whenever you read the Bible, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you to remember what you have read. So that you are able to tell others about it. You are able to witness through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit helps you to remember the scriptures, even without the Bible. So remember in first stage the truth refers to the Bible. You see the Holy Spirit leads us to the scriptures, then he leads us in the scriptures, and then he leads us by the scriptures. That is what Jesus meant when he said, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. That is, he will speak only what God wants to say. And what God wants us to hear. That is found in the Bible. So you see, whenever you are speaking, it's not your authority. It is through the Holy Spirit. That is God's authority. So that's why I find that you don't need even to apologize when you are preaching because you are preaching not your word, you are preaching God's word. And through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is not an independent contractor. He does not speak on his own. When he speaks, he speaks what he hears from the Father and the Son. He is part of it. So now there is a very important principle we can learn here about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never lead you into an area or a situation that will violate the word of God. That's why I know that the Holy Spirit never leads a person, a Christian, to marry an unchristian. For 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 says, Do not be equally yoked together with unbelievers. That's why that the Holy Spirit will never lead a church to ordain a practicing homosexual. For that matter, a practice in adultery of the ministry. Because the word of God makes it plain that homosexuals and adulterers are sinners. Are sins. And the Holy Spirit, neither by reason nor by emotion, will lead in you such a way as to cause you to run head into the word of God. The Holy Spirit will guide you into the truth. If you are not experiencing the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life, the problem is not that the Holy Spirit is not speaking. The problem is either one of two things. First of all, we are not hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying. If you ever had the phone ring and you picked it up and answer, but the TV is on and you can't hear what the person is saying, it's not that the person who is talking is not saying something, but the problem is you are unable to hear. So what do you do? You switch off. Or you shout to the kids to say, please, lower your follow. Now the problem is not that the person is not speaking. The problem is you can't hear him because of the noise. Well, that is what happens to us so often. We are so deafened by the noise of the world. We get so busy in mingling things that we don't turn down the television and we don't quiet the crowd and we don't put down the mobile phone and give ourselves the atmosphere that we need in order to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us. We have no time for it. Sometimes we read the Bible with our phones beside us. We read the Bible with the TV on. You can't hear what God is saying because you are too busy with other things. Acts chapter 18 verse 2 says, in an extremely revealing verse about the speaking of the Holy Spirit, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. So the Holy Spirit spoke as they ministered to the Lord. Separate to me, Barnabas and Saul. If you only have a walk with Jesus on a Sunday, don't expect to hear him speak on a Monday. But if you will take time every day to minister to the Lord, to get into the word, to speak the, with the Lord, you will hear from the Lord and the Spirit will guide you. So you need to hear the word of God almost every day. But the other problem may be that we are hearing, but we are not obeying. Where there is no obedience, there will be no guidance. Acts chapter 5 verse 32 says, We are his witness to these things, and also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So the Holy Spirit only comes to those who are in obedience to God's word. You see, the problem with most believers is not that we, we need guidance. In what we don't know, it is that we are not obeying what we do know. We know the Bible as it is, but we don't obey it. The way to learn the will of God is in an unknown area of your life. 
is to obey the will of God in the known area of your life. You obey God on those things that you know. The Holy Spirit will lead you to receive truth and will lead you to remember the truth if you are only determined to allow him to lead you to respond to the truth. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the fathers are mine. Therefore I say that you will take mine and declare to you in verses 14 and 15. So the Holy Spirit has not come just to guide us to know things. The Holy Spirit has come to guide us to know him, to love him, to save him, and to glorify him. Do you know what the phrase in the loop means? It means to be real in the inner circle, in the know of what is going on. So through the Holy Spirit, God wants us to be in the glory loop. Even now the Father is glorifying the Son, it's the only way to be saved. The Son is glorifying the Father by speaking to reconcile to him. And the Holy Spirit glorifies the Son and the Father by living in us, giving us the power to obey the Father, the faith to trust in the Son and to all do of it so that they glorify the Father through Jesus Christ. So the principle really helps me to remember something else about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He will always guide me to do nothing more than else, nothing less, and nothing but glorify Jesus Christ. You find a church that will make much more of Jesus, and you find a church that full of the Holy Spirit. But you find a church that makes much of the Spirit to the neglect of Jesus. And you won't find a lot of either Jesus or the Holy Spirit. But that leads me to a practical question. How can we be guided by the Holy Spirit? How can we find him that we might follow him? Let me give you three simple steps. First of all, we must acknowledge his leadership. Proverbs 3 verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You ought to begin every day by recognizing the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and acknowledge his reality to you. Acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Secondly, we are to ask for his leadership. You have not because you have not asked it. James always says that. Every day we should ask the dear Holy Spirit to lead us because as one person well said, it is better to ask the Lord to direct your path than it is to correct your mistakes. Finally, you should accept his leadership. That is, each day you should surrender your life to the leadership of the Spirit, ask him to fuel you and to help you to follow him. When a large ship enters a harbor, it takes on board what is called a harbor master. This is the man who knows that harbor. He knows the length of it. He knows the depth of it. He knows where the hazards are. He knows where the tides and currents are what direction they flow and how strong they are. When that harbor master comes on board, he takes control of that ship. And he gives order to the captain who steers the ship. He is an outside exit who is brought to make sure that the ship docks safely because he's a harbor master. As we sail through the sea of life, we have been given a harbor master. He is the Holy Spirit. He knows the currents, the tides, and the hazards, and the flow. If you will let him guide the ship of your life, he will guide you safely through the hazards of earth. Right in the hub of heaven. Because he's the only guide you need, and nothing else. You need the Holy Spirit to guide you. Don't let the flesh guide you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. May God bless you and help you from now and evermore. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We ask you to help us in our situation, Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you to always guide us. Gracious God, in, ignite our prayers with the life-giving fire of Pentecost that we may not fear our inadequacy our hesitance or our doubt, but bring before you all that we are and all that we have been and all that we can be. 
May we know that we can never aim high enough, never conceive anything complete enough to prepare us for all who would bless us with individually, as our communities, as nations. Help us gather together and wait for your afresh trust in your love, mercy and forgiveness. Be with us, Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I would ask you, brothers and sisters, to, as we take our offering, that we always remember to thank God for what God has done in our lives. So it is time for us to take our offerings and say thank you, Lord, uh, for all his providence. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We pray that you, God, you are the Alpha and Omega of our lives. We thank you for everything that you have given us. We thank you especially the Holy Spirit that you have given us. So that the Holy Spirit can guide us wherever we are going. You said you will not leave us alone, but you give us the Holy Spirit. Father, I just pray, may you continue to bless us. May you continue to shower us with all these blessings. Thank you, Lord. Bless these offerings. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us receive the blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless you.